Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. Hello, this is Dr. Lara with Light Body Radio. Welcome to another episode. Today we're going to talk about that pesky snooze button. So did you know that more than one in three adults press the snooze three times before getting up in the morning? I'll admit I was once one of them. I don't do it anymore, thank goodness. But um, more than half of adults in their 20s and early 30s say they hit the snooze button every single morning. And while it's not a huge deal to snag a few extra minutes of shut eye once in a while, fighting your alarm on a regular basis might actually leave you feeling more tired during the day and affect your sleep at night. So before we dive in into some um, tips and tricks, which are always my favorite part of the episode to help you as much as I can, I want to give you some background about the sleep cycle. So in order to understand why the snooze button can be so detrimental, it helps to have a general idea of your sleep cycle or the stages of sleep your brain cycles through in order to help you rest up and recharge. Ideally, when your head hits the pillow, hopefully you feel drowsy and you begin to nod off. Now, at this point, you're in light sleep when your heart rate slows and your body temperature starts to drop. After light sleep comes deep sleep. And this stage is super important since it's the period of sleep when your body is hard at work regrowing tissues, building bone, muscle, and strengthening your immune system. Once you've moved through deep sleep, then you hit REM sleep or REM. During REM, which stands for rapid eye movement, your brain is highly active and you experience dreams. But despite that intense activity, REM sleep is actually highly restorative and getting enough of it is crucial for feeling sharp and focused the next day. You usually experience your first REM stage about 90 minutes after you first nod off and you cycle through several of those stages throughout the night. So what does all of this have to do with the snooze button? When your alarm goes off in the morning, you're usually nearing the end of your last REM cycle if you haven't been interrupted. Wake up and get yourself out of bed and then the REM cycle ends. If you hit snooze, you go back to sleep and you're throwing yourself right back into REM cycle. When your alarm goes off a second time, it wakes you up in the middle of REM instead of at the end of REM. And as a result, you end up feeling foggy and disoriented. When you hit the snooze and go back to sleep, you send your whole system into a confusing tailspin. And before long, your body isn't sure when it's time to wake up or when it's time to go to sleep. And this can also affect your cortisol. So if your body doesn't know when it's time to go to sleep, you could be spending a lot of time tossing and turning. And as a result, you could be end up um, getting less quality of sleep, worse quality of sleep, whatever, you know what I mean. (laughs) And it doesn't take long. Just one week of poor sleep can mess with hundreds of genes in your body, leading to heightened stress, lowered immunity, and increased inflammation. And hopefully if you've listened to enough of my episodes, you understand how detrimental increased inflammation is. So after a while, all these effects start to add up. When you're stressed, you have a harder time focusing, you're more prone to feeling snappy or irritable or just moody in general. When your immune system isn't working at its best capacity, you're more likely to get sick, which could make it even harder for you to achieve quality of sleep. And worst of all, experiencing chronically high levels of inflammation could increase your risk for serious health problems like heart disease, cancer, stroke, and cognitive decline. So I'm going to run through some questions um, so we can examine what are some of the factors that are influencing why you're hitting the snooze button so much. Are you getting to bed early enough? 
If you're staying up too late, it's no wonder you want to press a snooze in the morning. In the morning, trust me, I know. I still don't exactly call myself a morning person, but I was chronically a night owl for many years. And experts agree that most of us do best on seven to eight hours of sleep per night, which means that if your alarm starts blaring at 7 a.m., you should be asleep at least by midnight. Are you exercising? Study after study shows that people who are active tend to sleep better than their sedentary counterparts. Make it a habit to get moving for at least a half an hour uh, most days of the week. Do you find yourself hyped up before bed? Are you downing espresso before dinner or even coffee or maybe even green tea? Are you scrolling through Instagram as you try to nod off? All of these things will keep you energized and make it harder for you to fall asleep. On the other hand, if you can do something mellow, like take a nice bath or even read a book, not on your tablet, but a real book, this will help you feel calmer and more relaxed and will also decrease the amount of blue light that you're exposed to. And again, I'm, I've uh, written blogs and done podcasts on this also in the past. So blue light, as we know, definitely interrupts our sleep cycle and the hormones that our body produces like melatonin to get us ready for sleep. So are you comfortable in your bedroom? If your environment isn't comfy and cozy, you're going to have a harder time falling asleep and it'll, and you'll be more likely to toss and turn and just not sleep well. So do what you can to ensure that your mattress and your bedding is comfortable. You have some nice pillows that are supportive. You keep your room quiet and dark and as cool as possible. And if you're like me, um, I'm not a light sleeper, but sometimes there'll be sounds that'll like jar me awake. So I have a fan. Um, And so having the fan or an air purifier that hums will drown out maybe noises like door slamming or people laughing in the next room. Um, So any of those things, keep that in mind. Do you have chronic sleep issues already? Are you affected by things like restless leg syndrome or obstructive sleep apnea? All of these things could lead to poor and fragmented sleep. If you notice that physical symptoms are messing with your snooze time and leaving you tired in the morning, it's definitely time to talk with your doctor about treatment options and specifically with medical conditions like sleep apnea or restless leg syndrome. There are things that you can do and, um, it's important that you address those and just not let them linger. Okay, so what can you do instead of hitting the snooze? Well, unfortunately, the answer is all too simple. The answer is just get out of bed. And again, from a former night owl, trust me, (laughs) I understand that it can be so hard. So waking up as soon as your alarm goes off, we all know, for those of us that were or or are chronic snoozers, this is really unpleasant. But after a few minutes, that groggy feeling will wear off and you'll start your day feeling refreshed and ready for action. So if you don't totally trust yourself to say no to the snooze button, go with some um, geographical solutions, like put your alarm on the other side of your bed, far, far away. Or, um, I don't know, I think most of us use our phones So I try to keep the phone out of the bedroom. Sometimes I'm good about it, sometimes I'm not. Um, But uh, we have an Alexa dot or spot, I'm not sure. We have an Alexa in our bedroom and you can have have her um, set the alarm to different um, voices, not just sounds. And so we have Alec Baldwin sometimes wake us up, which is really funny, or Missy Elliott. Those are the two that we like. So... Um, And it'll keep talking and it'll escalate. So it'll start off really quiet and then it'll get louder if you don't turn it off. And for me, I like that because one of the things that I really hate is that jolt. Like I really just don't like being jolted out of bed. I like a gentle, more easing into it. So 
Uh, there's also alarms that you can um, that uh, you can buy that uh, wake you up to natural light. And when I work, um, when I used to work early, early morning shift, but it was winter, it was so hard for me to get out of bed when it was st still dark. So I bought one of these alarms that's a natural light. And whatever time you set it for, it'll actually start turning the light on about 20 minutes before that time. So it's more of a natural way to wake you up. Now, within this alarm, there was also the radio and also tone. So there were other things, but the light was the main thing. So that might be something that you might try if you find that, you know, if it's still dark outside when you're getting up to go to work, um, that could be helpful for you. Your body has several natural mechanisms to help you uh, help prepare you wake up and get moving in the morning. One of these is starting to turn up your core temperature, which makes you feel more alert and less sleepy. And this usually starts about two hours before the body feels ready to wake up. If you're not getting enough sleep, your alarm clock and your alarm clock is going off while your temperature is still in deep sleep range, then the air in your bedroom can feel punishingly cold. And of course, your bed feels nice and cozy and warm. So just think about that too. Something else to consider. And like we've already said before, the body needs some time to get you ready to wake up. When you first let yourself go back to sleep, your body's thinking, awesome, false alarm. I guess I didn't need to do anything anyway because we're not getting after all. And so it settles back in and then the buzzer goes off a second time. And that is your body and your brain getting taken by surprise, resulting in the groggy, fuzzy headed feeling, which is called sleep inertia. The more you snooze, the more confused your body and brain get. So you'll probably feel more out of it even though you actually spent extra time in bed. What's more, this type of sleep inertia can persist for up to two hours, even four hours in some cases. So you're throwing off your internal clock by getting up, let's say at like 7 a.m. one day and 7.30 the next. And if you're not waking up at the same time every day, your body doesn't know when to start feeling sleepy, which can result in the likelihood that you're gonna push your bedtime later and further deprive yourself of the rest that you so desperately need. So let's talk about what you should do instead. How about set your alarm for the time you have to get up and then actually get up when it goes off. Every day at the same time, even on the weekends, because eventually this consistency will help you feel naturally sleepy at the end of your day, and you'll feel compelled to go to bed when your body needs to, and then you actually can wake up without the need for an alarm. I know I used to be totally confounded by these people that could just wake up without an alarm, but more and more, I, I'll be admit and honest, like I can't do it every day, all the time. But if I'm diligent and I am good about my own personal sleep hygiene, then yeah, on most days, I don't need an alarm before I have to get up and go to work. And I even work graveyards, so I have a crazy sleep schedule. But if I'm diligent and I'm, you know, cognizant and I'm really dedicated to it, then I go to sleep when I'm supposed to. I don't expose myself to blue light and my body naturally sleeps between six and eight hours and I wake up knowing that with that eight hours, I still have plenty of time to get up without an alarm and I won't be late or so. I hope this was um, informative and um, I think we talked about some tips, whether it was moving the alarm, setting, maybe looking into a different type of alarm, whether it be the light or something kind of funny and entertaining like the Alexa alarms. Uh, what else? Going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time. And um, really that is all of the stuff that we should all be doing. That is what our body would naturally be doing, you know, as sort of like the paleo person without all of this um, EMF and electronics and what has become our typical Western lifestyle. So uh, I hope again that this has been informative, that you enjoyed it and that you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments or want to tell me to go to hell because <laughs> you're still addicted to your snooze alarm, no problem. I can take it. And I hope to hear from you. Um, 
if you want to talk about something else or you want to hear me explore something else, definitely leave me some comments or email me. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.